Like, some of the points that the cops came up with, I'm like, are you dumb? Because you seem kind of dumb. That's why they need the amateur sleuths to solve the crime for them, because... No, they're even dumber. Welcome to Books and Banter, a podcast about books. I'm Janine, a library clerk. And I'm Jess, a branch admin. And we both work at the Winkler branch of South Central Regional Library. In this podcast, we talk about books with our own twist. We read the first half of the book and predict where it might be going, and then finish reading the book and discuss the second half. There will be snark, there will be spoilers, and depending on the book, there may be references to violence, sex, and other adult topics. So if that's not for you, stop listening now. All right, let's get into this week's book. All right, today we are diving into the cozy mystery Death by Bubble Tea by Jennifer J. Chow. When Yale Yi discovers her cousin Celine is visiting from Hong Kong, she is obliged to play tour guide to a relative she hasn't seen in 20 years. Not only that, but her father thinks it's a wonderful idea for them to bond by running a food stall together at the Eastwood Village Night Market. Yale hasn't cooked in years, and she hardly considers Celine's career as a social media influencer as adequate experience, but because she's just lost her job at her local bookstore, she feels she has no choice. Yale and Celine serve small dishes and refreshing drinks, and while business is slow, it eventually picks up thanks to Celine's surprisingly useful marketing ideas. They're quite shocked that their bubble tea in particular is a hit, literally, when one of their customers turns up dead. Yale and Celine are prime suspects due to the gold flakes that Celine added to the sweet drink as garnish. Though the two cousins are polar opposites in every way, they must work together to find out what really happened to the victim, or the only thing they'll be serving is time. (laughs) Uh, This book was released in July 2022 and is the first book in the LA Night Market series. The author, Jennifer J. Chow, is an Agatha, Anthony, and Lefty Award-nominated author, writing cozy mysteries filled with hope and heritage. Chow received her bachelor's degree from Cornell University and a master's degree in social welfare from UCLA, the University of California, Los Angeles. She has performed geriatric work with the elderly, which has influenced her stories. She also currently lives in Los Angeles. So, there you go. Now, I know from our conversation just a little while ago that Jess really did not like this book. I really, really, really (laughs) do not like this book. Um, I... So I want to start off by saying I like cozy mysteries, even though I know that they're terrible. They're terribly written books. Um, And there's usually like the characters are often very annoying and they're nosy. And I don't like that. However, cozy mysteries are predictable and they're not suspenseful, really. And they're not like it's there's something comforting about them to me. In that, like... It's like the cheesy romance where you know that the couple's going to get together yeah. in the end. Yeah, you know they're going to find the killer. You know they're going to get into a bit of a, a scrape at some point. Like, they're going to be threatened. But you know that they're going to be fine. And the person who's killed is usually, like, a minor character. <laughs> right? Like, it's not... Yeah. It's not, like, a major character that you're, like, have developed a... Uh, what's the word? That you care about or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's usually somebody that's just kind of there. And so... I like them. I like to read them before I go to bed because it's not something that's going to keep me up at night. It'll put you to sleep. (laughs) (laughs) So I do read a lot of them, um, and I acknowledge that they're often poorly written and the characters can be annoying, but there is just something. It's a comfort thing, right? Now, having said that, this one feels worse than most. (laughs) Oh, it is so bad. It is so bad. (laughs) So, yeah. Um, One thing I did like... I like the concept of the night market and the area that she lives in where she can, like, walk everywhere she needs to go, and it seems like a nice neighborhood. The concept of it is great. Mm -hmm. I think a night market sounds like a blast. I would attend a night market. Winkler, have a night market. (laughs) Do not read this book to figure out how to put on a night market. Yeah, no. It's a terrible example. (laughs) But I think as a concept, it is fascinating Mm -hmm. because do I have time during the day to go to, like, a farmer's market? No, I do not. Would I go to a night market? Yeah, I totally would. I think it'd be a blast. And plus just the aesthetic of a night market with the lights and Mm -hmm. whatnot. I think marketing would be so simple. Yeah. And the setting, like the community that she lives in. Like she lives in L.A., but she lives in like, seems like a smaller area. Like she can walk where she needs to go. She has a nice apartment, you know, like everything is kind of local and like... 
Yeah, like it just seems just like a nice fun. little community that she's got there, and so that part was like, yeah, okay, I like, you know, she had a nice job at a bookstore, which she got fired from. Yes, but like the area is fantastic. The night market, really cool. Mm-hmm. We should do it. My problem is she's paying for this. How? Yeah, she got she... fired from her job. Bought an extra book at her job. <laughs> Was going to go out for lunch, but forgot. And seems to be not at all worried about how she's going to pay rent. Oh. How she's going to afford to live. Her dad pays her rent. Yeah, she's spoiled. Yeah. Like, she is such a little spoiled brat. She's an only child, and her dad runs a very successful restaurant. Which she could do some helping at. Yes. There is some trauma there related to that, I think, though. uh, Which hasn't fully come out yet. So I'm not sure. Yeah, but there's still something that you could be doing. I know. But there's something to do with because the cooking and her mom who died that... Yeah. But her dad seems stressed and like he needs, an ha- needs yeah. a hand. Yeah. And yeah. she just shows up and freeloads and steals food. Help a pop out. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's paying your rent as the least you could do. <laughs> yeah. Like, the way the area is described, it's got a fountain, it's got a courtyard. Mm-hmm. She went to, like, the internet center with the local pool yeah. and the cabanas where I'm like... Yep. We're talking thousands of dollars a month here. Mm-hmm. You work part-time at a bookstore. Yeah. A bookstore that cannot afford to pay you very much. Mm-hmm. That what could are you doing? afford to keep you. Like, oh, I yep. just cannot stand this woman. <laughs> it's that in, like... Breezy, breezy, everything will work itself out. Yeah, it will, because your father's paying for it. This character seems happy to go through life while everything's being paid for by her dad. Yeah. And putting in little to no effort. Well, she just doesn't seem to know what she wants. That doesn't mean you can't still get a job. I know. You have to pay for life when you figure it out. I know. Anyway, (laughs) I could go on about this for three days. We're clearly not going to do that. (laughs) We don't have three days. No. (laughs) What do you think of her cousin? I don't like her cousin either. She seems snobbish. I don't have a problem with her cousin. No. I think her cousin is your standard, like, social media influencer, Mm -hmm. where I I don't generally have a use for them because (laughs) get a job. (laughs) It is a job, though. (laughs) This episode just tells everyone to get a job. (laughs) No, like, I don't get... Yeah. The whole social media thing, I don't understand why you would want to tell someone where you are, what you're doing at all times of day, because to me, that's a security nightmare. Mm-hmm. That being said, she shows up at the airport. Yeah, she ends up taking the Uber to the hotel or whatever. Mm-hmm. Fine. She just got off a long flight. It's very conceivable that she doesn't want to have lunch with Yale, especially considering Yale seemed to not think. Mm-hmm. Like, welcome, you just got off a plane, welcome to America. Would you like to eat in the airport? Yeah, and also take public transit to get... While she has three, like Mm -hmm. a big stack of suitcases. Right, but that was also the other thing. She, it sounded like she was only supposed to be there for a weekend. Mm -hmm. Why does she need three suitcases? Well, there's clearly something going on there. Yes, I know. But also, who flies from Hong Kong to California for a weekend? Yeah, crazy people. People who hate the environment and kill the, the like crazy kill rich, the crazy rich Asians. <laughs> That's a good book. Anyway, uh, like, yeah. Overall, I feel like Gale is being quite rude to Celine <laughs> when Celine is like. Don't get me wrong; she's not Mother Teresa. No. Thank God for that, because boy, I could tell you some things. <laughs> okay. Like Celine, like she's doing her best. She's trying to promote their food stand. Yeah. She's got costuming ideas. Mm -hmm. She has these cool drinks. By all accounts, the food stand would be nothing if it wasn't for her. She's not really stepped on Yale's toes at all in terms of anything else. By all accounts, she's been trying to be nice, trying to be helpful. She's trying to be helpful. A little bit self-centered in your standard influencer way. A little uppity. A little uppity, but nothing. Like, Yale is, like, downright rude to her. Yeah, that's true. And, like... Even her internal monologue is just nasty the entire time. Where I'm like, <laughs> you're the bad guy here. <laughs> Maybe she's the killer. I'm like, Yale is like, yeah, Celine probably killed her. Celine, did you kill her? No, I think Celine killed her. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, and if if she did, it was not on purpose. No. Like. And like the whole, okay, I don't remember his name. We're going to call him the Ecuadorian dude. The whole tortilla... Oh, yeah, yeah. Not tortilla thing. Yeah. 
Papusas. Papusas. Is that what they are? Something along the The guy who's giving out the free stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I am rather irked. Because A, the dude was clearly doing like the flirting marketing thing. Oh, absolutely. It wasn't like, I love you. Like, (laughs) it was clearly, (laughs) hey, stop by. Like, yeah. He was not personally interested in Yale. That was abundantly clear. Yeah. Celine, we didn't see that interaction. He may have been more personally interested in her. Yeah. But to try and, like, show up at his restaurant and go, like, oh, didn't expect both of us, did you? <laughs> like, are you trying to play me? Like, get over yourself. The dude's trying to sell food. Yeah. Blake. Balake. Balake, yes. <laughs> but, like, the, the food that he was trying to sell. Another, sorry, I'm just going to rant here for time. <laughs> The food that he was trying to sell. Papuse? Papusa? Something like that, yeah. Uh, this now is I have to find terrible it considering the point I'm about to make. Anyways, his food. His food. South American food. She is quite uppity regarding food and like the authenticity of it. Mm-hmm. And like, mm, no, it's called this. And like the constant correcting of people. And like, yeah, the correction's not a bad thing. But then she repeatedly calls his food tortillas. <laughs> Which he's explained to her, no, they're not. Yeah. And then she continues to do it to the point where she, at his restaurant, is going, hmm, is it still okay to call them tortillas? Lady, <laughs> you can't be that uppity about your own ethnic food while completely disregarding the rules of someone else's ethnic food. <laughs> yes. Like, mm. Jess has feelings, people. I hate this character. I hate <laughs> this character so much. So she's just terrible. One thing that really bothered me, so they start investigating, which they always do. Mm-hmm. They went to the victim's apartment and delivered food. Mm-hmm. They did not ask them a single question. They dropped off the food. They made up a story about where it was from. Gained no information whatsoever. What was the point of that? Lawsuits. And hmm. that, if it was me, I would be suing them. Yeah. But, like, normally, when they start their investigation, they start, and they nose around, and they ask a lot of silly questions. They are so bad at they everything they do. very terrible at it. Very like, terrible. A, by all accounts, the cop is doing his job. He's investigating. Mm-hmm. He's doing a good job of investigating. You do not need to stick your nose in. No. It's not as though it's not being handled. You are interfering with a police investigation, which you can be charged for, and I wholeheartedly think they should be. They never are in these books, though. I know, it's unfortunate. That's a rule we could be using a lot more, a little less Second Amendment, a lot more less interfering. In some cases, they fall in love with a police officer. Well, yes, because it's an inside information. Yeah. Now you can more easily guess his password if you know his birthday. Mm-hmm. But, like, he's, he's doing his job. You know yeah. he's doing his job. They always are. Yale, and this irked me to no end, the victim's sister was at the police station the same time they were mm-hmm. rather than just letting her go no Yale gets in her way and like yeah leave her alone I'm not gonna say questioned but was bugging her mm-hmm. her sister just died yeah you were the one suspected of killing her or your food mm-hmm. leave her alone <laughs> Can't that is do it. so inappropriate papusa p-u-p-u-s-a papusa there we go I want to say they sound delicious. I need to look them up. I know. It's funny because they were mentioned in another book that we're reading for a different episode. Did you notice that? Yes. <laughs> yes. I was like, I've never heard of these things and now two books on the same day. Now I've heard of it twice. Yeah. Now I really want to try them because <clears throat> they sound delicious. Even, okay, so they brought the food. You're bringing food to a victim's house after the previous food of yours that the victim ate. So it's suspected of killing her. <laughs> True. Have we thought this through? Well... One could say that the food that they ate, it was the drink that they think, the bubble tea, right? They were not delivering bubble tea. They were bringing food prepared from a different place. Well, I guess the food was the same. It was different food. I don't know. See, that's the thing. It's food prepared pretty much in the same place. Like, apart from, I think, the actual bubble tea itself, Mm -hmm. everything was pre-prepared at the restaurant. Yeah. B, you are still bringing... The same household food. That's a liability. Like, I want a lawyer to read this book because, oh my word, they'd have a heyday. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think that lawyers should read Cozy Mystery. I'm just assuming that if they do, there's a lot more exploding heads everywhere. And police officers also. Yes. <laughs> Does your cousin read Cozy Mystery? I don't think so. <laughs> that would be hilarious, no. actually. I should give him one. 
<laughs> Here, try this one. See what you think. <laughs> Tell, oh, let me know. Man. Well, like then, okay, so they gave him the food, and they just kind of went, like, oh, cool, free food, which... Suspicious much? Yeah, right? Like, I, it's free food that people just show up outside your apartment. Like, Am I just more suspicious of humanity than everyone else? I wouldn't be eating that. Well, because they said it was from Balake. Sorry, I can't see <laughs> like normally anymore. Still wouldn't eat it. Um, but because one of them had a crush on him and... Yes, one of them also recently died. I know. Via food. <laughs> well, Pardon me if okay. I prepare by myself. We, we don't Any know that for 100% sure that it no. was the food. No, which is a point that I'm getting to as well. Okay. But they go to the apartment. They snoop without actually learning any relevant information. The roommates are actively getting rid of Jordan's stuff. Yeah. Before the police have even finished their investigation. None of them seem very broken up about it. I mean, I know she's your roommate, not like... That roommate doesn't mean best friend. But she's still dead. It sounds like, though, she had conflicts with each one of her roommates. Doesn't mean we're dancing on her grave yet. No, I know. Like, this was within a week. I know. That's very quick to go, get the shovel. Like... (laughs) Sorry, I meant shallow oh. in regards to her pr- her belongings, not grave. You really hated this book. You <laughs> really hated this book. <laughs> but then, these two random, seemingly delivery people, they take her stuff, and then they go through it. I'm like, nah, this is all junk. Well, it was all junk, it. though. It was a box of junk. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you were interfering in an active investigation. You were taking what could quite likely be evidence and removing it. Do you think that junk was actual evidence? I'm just saying, it's very <laughs> likely that her friends, who were also at the night market, may have slipped or something, killed her, and then now the removal of these items, so close to the point of death, is suspicious unto itself, but what we see as junk might have actual clothes in it within a week. You're overthinking it. <laughs> Which is why I don't do cozy mysteries. <laughs> You're taking it too seriously. That's the thing. You have to go into it knowing this book is going to be crap, (laughs) but it's going to follow the standard of Cozy Mysteries, and that's okay. Normally, the one or two other Cozy Mysteries that I've read, like, the character's been annoying. Mm -hmm. They've been kind of like, keep your nose out of it. It's literally not your job. But this one, like, the people are just actively... (laughs) It's just so bad. Sorry, it's a little funny to me how, like, upset you are over this book. There's a reason why I try not to read books I don't like. Because I get too into them. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, No. You are definitely overthinking. Yes, but this character's terrible. Okay, I I don't disagree. I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I'm just saying. Also deluded. Completely deluded. Oh, yeah. Because at one point, Yale says... Yeah, no, I'm I'm fired for now, mm-hmm. but only until things get back to normal. Yeah. There was no indication that they would rehire her. No. That they would have the financial means to do so. No. They it never... seemed like for the foreseeable future, they were on like a two-person only staff. Like... And only because they are sisters and they own the store together. they own the store together. <laughs> they can't like, fire each other. You know, you can, but there's a lot of paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> but like... No, Just yeah. that, like, oh, no, no, they'll give me my job back. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Not in this economy, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was last 2022's economy, so. Yeah, yeah. Still not great. But I, yeah, no, I, I liked that it was a fast read. It wasn't fast because I had to keep going back and going, wow, you are really dumb, aren't you? Because you wrote pages and pages of notes also. Yes, I did. Uh, I wrote like, like, read a sentence, this is so dumb, write a note. (laughs) I I wrote literally four lines. One of them says, dun dun dun. Half of mine contain words that are not allowed to be used in podcasts. (laughs) And also, of course, Nick and Yale are going to fall in love. I hope not. Can we not see that coming from a mile away? Yes, but I hope not, because he can do better. Also, he's a bit of a... Also, the drama with Nick was like... I don't like you because you're better than me at things. Mm. <laughs> Try harder. <laughs> or accept the fact you're not going to always be the best at everything. Yeah. And that's okay. You don't have to vilify this guy no. because of it. Right. Plus, he's kind of annoying. Yeah, they both are. They right. all are. It's. And what are the parents fighting about? I still don't think we got a good answer to that question. I get the impression of something that she did. There's a lot of, like things going on in the background 
that have unanswered questions that I would like the answers to. Mm -hmm. Also with Celine and her parents and why she had to suddenly flee the country. (laughs) I don't know if it was flee the country. Well, she packed three bags for a weekend getaway to Los Angeles. But she's also an influencer who does multiple costume changes in the day, for lack of a better term. Costume (laughs) changes. That's the problem with being an insta-fluencer. (laughs) Insta-fluencer. Why does that sound like more of a plumbing apparatus? (laughs) (laughs) We'll just put this new valve on your toilet and call it the (laughs) (laughs) insta-fluencer. Sorry. Why does this happen every time we come in here? I swear there's a CO2 leak. Or <laughs> this has got to be. Building. There's got to be. Possession by the creepy mannequin. It's that. Yeah. It's her. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. The influencer lifestyle makes no sense to me whatsoever. No. I don't um, get it. Nope. But, I mean, we know somebody who that's like their livelihood. A married couple with kids. And that's, they're both have accounts and that's what they do for their work uh but yeah i mean it works for some people i don't know how long it will be a thing there's a point where i'm like if your influencer thing is you shilling whatever products or Mm -hmm. travel or food or whatever fine when it gets to be the parenting and your product is your children and how you're raising them yeah that i don't like i have major issues with that yeah partially because your kid's gonna have to work one day Mm -hmm. and (laughs) Just imagine if they're a lawyer, and the opposing counsel goes, Your Honor, I'd like to bring to this attention my uh, opposing counsel, them sucking their thumb at 15 years of age. I think we can all agree we shouldn't be taking this person seriously. So <laughs> Probably not going to happen. But my point is, putting your children's entire life on the internet for strangers is yeah creepy as hell and problematic. Yeah, no, that's not what these people do. Like... She does recipes, Mm -hmm. so she's a food blogger. And then they also have a travel blog as well. So it's not... And, like, when they travel, yeah, they put pictures of their kids. But it's not like their kids are, like, friends. Their kids are not their product. So, like, I watched... I saw a video the other day of, like, a fairly well-known influencer. Um, Her kid, her five... Is she four or five? She might be five. I don't know. She's four or five years old. And then they have, like, a one-year-old. And they were having, like, a dance party. And the one-year-old was, like, getting into the shot. And the mom was, like, panning the camera, right? And every time she panned away, the kid had to, like... The four-year-old had to, like, get back in the shot, right? And she was just, like, working the camera. Like, she knows. She knows how to perform. Mm -hmm. Kid is four years old. And, like, she's just so used to having a camera in her face all the time. She just has to be there. She had to be in the shot all the time and like to the point where I'm going to shove my one year old sister out of the way so I can be in the shot because like, that's what I know so unhealthy it's like sad. you're teaching your children that all the validation in life of who they are and what they're good at comes from random strangers on the internet yeah who are an incredibly fickle bunch oh absolutely and th- is this kid cute absolutely but in that moment I was like this kid is annoying I don't mm-hmm. want to watch this. Like, you can tell that she's performing yeah. all the time. And I just think, what a way to live as a four or five-year-old. Like, that you feel like you have to perform all the time. Well, that's the thing. And, like, to have so much of your personal life before you're even the age of consent. Yeah, I know. Like, you can't have certain social media accounts until certain ages. Mm-hmm. But that apparently doesn't apply if it's your parents making right? money off of you. And even, How is that legal? I know. Like, I will post pictures of my kids on Instagram where I know who is following me and who mm. can see. Private my account is private. And everything. That's a totally different matter. With my teenager, I generally ask her before I post. Not 100% of the time, but generally I try to ask her before I post. Mm. Because I want to be respectful of her. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I don't know. Daughter number two went through a period where... She would get a hold of my phone, and she knows how to get the camera without unlocking the phone. And she would video herself, hi, and I'm just sitting in the car, and, like, I'll... She would record video after video, and I'm like, okay. Obviously, she's seen this. She knows, right? Mm -hmm. But this isn't going anywhere, so it's kind of funny. Yeah. After a while, I'm like, okay, that's enough, like, (laughs) whatever. But she doesn't do that anymore, and she's not, like, clamoring to be... Yeah. Like, videoed or whatever. It's like your standard kid, like, I want to be in a picture! 
water, yeah. that kind of thing. But, but yeah, I feel sad for those kids whose parents are like putting them online all the time and well, like especially the ones that are like, oh, look what this kid did. That's so dumb. I'm like, yeah, that's your kid. You're yeah. supposed to be the one supporting them. You're supposed to be the mm-hmm. one helping them. You're not supposed to be the one softcore bullying them. That or like thinking your kid is the best at everything, even when mm-hmm. like they do really stupid things. Yeah. But, uh... And, like, one-offs. Yeah. There's a point where I'm like, mm, but yeah, fine. <laughs> anyway, we've gotten slightly off topic That's here. a little, yeah. <laughs> anyway, on to the ranting. <laughs> how much How much longer do we have to go? How many more rants? Quite a bit. Oh, boy. We're going to be here all day. Yeah. <laughs> Most of it's about gold. Okay. Let's mm-hmm. get into the gold aspect, then. I know the cop is doing his job. Good. Has he done a talk screen? There was no indication. So they check the contents of the stomach, and that's what they're basing things off of. Well, talk screens take time. Yes, but you don't run on the gold is the killer until you got your talk screen done. Because people eat gold all of the time. You look up gold influencer food stuff. Oh, yeah. The internet is lousy with it. Gold is edible. Mm -hmm. I think it's ridiculous, because what a waste. (laughs) But she also had some kind of metal allergy, though. She was allergic to nickel. Mm. The Craft City employee, which is not confirmation enough <clears throat> that your item is non-toxic, <laughs> said it was 24 carats gold, I believe. 23. 23 carats. It's a lot of carrots. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of carrots to eat. There's no guarantee that there's not nickel yeah. in there somewhere, but to assume that gold's what killed her when gold is disturbingly regularly used in food is uninformed. Also, then it's an accidental killing and not a murder. Exactly. Which, it's it's obviously not that. Well, why are you focusing so hard on that to begin with? Because she, you literally have documentation of everything she ate that night. Right. By all indications, they're not questioning everybody else Except there to was that degree. some that was deleted off of her because she's also a foodstagrammer. Yeah, I was a little world lousy with them. Yeah. But, like, um, some of the things that she ate were deleted off her profile. Yeah. Right? So there's obviously something there. But didn't they? But the police also haven't gone after anybody else that we know of as hard as they've gone after the tea thing because gold kills, well, according Well, because they to think them. that Celine and her were rivals. And because there was some back and forth between them. Yeah, but, like, not I'm, even. I'm just saying, that's... Like, their back and forth was nothing more than your standard internet comments back and forth. Well, I know, but I'm just saying that's probably why they're focusing on her. Right? Because they're foodstagrammers, they're rivals, they're... Maybe check into the roommates who, by all accounts, all apparently <laughs> hated her. <laughs> yes. And who are now actively getting rid of her stuff. Well, wasn't her sister part of getting rid of her stuff, too, though? Because didn't they say her sister was there? I'm not entirely sure. I thought that's what they had said. Because they said... seems suspicious. Because they had that box of junk, and they said even her sister didn't want this. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if her sister was there or had been there. Yeah. Well, she had been there. I don't think she was there at the time that Yale and Celine were there, but she had definitely been there. Like, the whole gold angle is irking the heck out of me. (laughs) You can be poisoned with gold. But it's obviously not that. But it is in entirely different doses than a few flakes. Yeah. B, at one point they say, oh, well, she had a nickel allergy, you know. Mm-hmm. And thus the metal, the gold killed her. No. One metal allergy does not mean you're allergic to all metals. And then Because that's not how it works. Again, then it's an accidental mur- killing. Yeah. It's not a murder. Defeats like, the purpose of the book. It's like we know it's not the gold. We can rule out the gold. It it just irks me that they're going so hard on this angle when there's other angles out there. Doesn't the police officer know that this is a cozy mystery and it's not the gold? <laughs> like it's so obvious. He should. He should, he should know. Have figured it out, dude. It's not the gold. Like it's not like it is unusual to put gold in food. No, not at all. If you watch enough cooking shows, you'll see that. And like, okay, if it was. Like, I, I'm assuming they're testing the gold, because by the sounds of it, they, they were sending the stuff they had to the lab. Mm-hmm. I want to know how much of a nickel allergy she had. Nickel is a common alloy mm-hmm. used in other metals. 
to what degree, like, even if these gold flakes were partially nickel, we're still talking a sprinkling. Like, if she is that allergic to it, doorknobs could kill her. <laughs> like, a metal doorknob, a metal pan. There's so much out there that could kill her. She should be dead many times by now. You thought about this book way more than I did. That's I was because like, it was driving me crazy. These girls are the worst amateur sleuths that I've ever read. Uh, it's not the gold. Let's move on from that. She's going to fall in love with Nick. And I hope not. What's going to happen next? That's like basically I had like... Like you got so like, many more notes. I'm so annoyed about this book. I can Because tell. the science of everything is just wrong. Okay. It's a cozy mystery. They're I not know. known for their accuracies. It is very difficult to turn off the logic and annoying uh-huh. part of my brain. Also, another comment. We think the gold may have punctured her internal organs. No. No. Gold is soft. And have flakes? You done anything. Flakes of gold? Yes. Like sprinkles? No. That's not going to puncture anything. Like, she's not swallowing gold nails here. Like, I'm not a detective. I'm not a scientist. And even I know that. Yeah. Like, That's... some of the, the points that ca- the cops came up with, I'm like... Are you dumb? Yes. Yes, they are. Because you seem kind of dumb. That's why they need the amateur sleuths to solve the crime for them, because... They no, they're know. even dumber. In this case, yes. Generally, they're not quite this dumb. But I, I want to say what I say to my kids, which is, I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> which I'm probably sure I've said it on this show before. Oh, you probably have. Because it's a quote from one of my favorite all-time movies. Hmm. Anyway. I do have one final complaint. Okay. Let's I lay it on me. I promise this is the last one. Lay it on me. On her last day of work, Yale goes into the database for the bookstore and takes Jordan's personal home address. Yeah. That is unethical and borderline illegal. Very bad. At this point, she's committing more crimes trying to investigate this murder. (laughs) And she's going to end up going to jail for doing all the things that she's done while investigating this murder that she didn't do. She didn't do the murder, but she did all these other things. And bye-bye, Yale. It's the only thing she's going to be serving is time. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, won't no. end it with that. With all she's going to be serving is time. <laughs> but but first, I want to hear your prediction. Who do you think is the killer? I think it's the ice cream people. Okay, that's interesting. Why would the ice cream people? The mention of the uh, was an FDA, it was EDA or something. The, the oh, food yeah, yeah. services inspection people. Yeah, I don't think that'd be enough to kill her. But at this point, they're as good as anybody else. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was Nick. He, no, it wasn't Nick. He doesn't seem to have the brains to no. do it. Um, Nor Blake. Blake just honestly seems like he wants to sell the not tortilla tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to impress a girl. Yeah. He, he seems very much the uh, easy come, easy go. Yeah. Like, he's not didn't care enough to go to all the effort of killing no, her. No, definitely not him. Uh, who else is there? I think maybe it was one of the roommates. The roommates are a strong contender. Mm-hmm. I'm going to write down roommates for myself. I like to keep track of a prediction in a book like this. The only thing steering me away from the roommates would be the fact that everything's about food. Hmm. And the roommates. Mm. But they were... It's entirely possible. They hate her as much as anybody else. They were all at the night market together, but they didn't all leave together. Mm-mm. And somehow something happened there. And I think one of them wasn't there at all. Yeah, that could be. You might be right. I think two of them were there, one left early, one died. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or th- three of the four were there, one left early, one died, one mm-hmm. undetermined. Yeah. But. I don't know. That's my guess. I would. They're suspicious enough. I. There's a part of me that thinks it's the sister. <laughs> a little bit. She's very aggressive. Yeah, she is. We'll use that term. If anyone should be the main character of this book, who's doing the sleuthing, it would be her. (laughs) Because these other two random girls, who definitely weren't going to get charged with it anyway, really need to go mind their own business. Maybe put some time and effort into perusing the job ads, (laughs) and knocking up a resume, maybe going for a few interviews. Why would you do that when you have your rich cousin... With her fancy car to drive you around town to expensive restaurants to eat food. Like, there's a lot of... They eat a lot in this book. You're going to criticize the entire time. There's a lot of eating in this book. Yeah. And strangely enough, the 
papusa is the only thing that made me want food. Because <laughs> I was I'm like, I could go for that right now. Mm. Some of the other food, I was like, oh, that might be good. I don't know. The the bubble tea grosses me out. Mm. A, I don't like tea. B, it's cold. C, it's got things in it. Doesn't well. The bubble tea I've had doesn't really taste like tea. It's sweet, but I've only had like fruit ones with like popping bubbles in them. I would. I, I like my drinks to be drinks and my food to be food. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to try some of the tapioca ones. The chewiness of it appeals to me. The chewiness of it really doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> the thing is, like smoothies, I like. Yeah, smoothies are smooth. <laughs> Stay here for more top food tips. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's the, the the bits in it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm. But they're not, like, they're not small. I know. That's the thing. And, like, okay. I... Let me explain this in one fell swoop. Okay. When I was a wee small child, my dad liked tapioca pudding. Mm-hmm. And he explained to us that tapioca pudding was made with frog's eggs. Okay, well, and yeah. And that has per- failed in my head yep. from that day forth. Mm-hmm. To me, I've never been able to get over that. Like, yeah, no, it could be yeah. frog's eggs. <laughs> like, okay, I get that. Like, in, it's very similar in texture. Mm-hmm. In well, the bigger ones, obviously not size, but like that. Yeah, no. Okay, I I understand. Like, like yeah. when my uncle told me that uh, halva is made from camel hair. Mm. I I mean, I didn't eat it before then, but I no halva's disgusting. It's gross. I don't eat it now. <laughs> and then he also told me one time that farmer sausage had blood in it. And That's I black pudding didn't eat farmer sausage for years. Not farmer sausage, breakfast sausage. Mm. I didn't eat breakfast sausage for years after that because I just couldn't. Hmm. I ate. love farmer sausage. That's the breakfast fantastic. sausage. Breakfast sausage is a little off. It depends. That's the one that he said. Not farmer sausage. It was breakfast sausage. It depends on how they're cooked. And but anyway, like the really weird. Those things stick with you. Yes. Uh. And normally, I'm the sort of person who likes... I like my smoothies smooth. Mm -hmm. I like my pudding without lumps. I like my orange juice without pulp. Yeah, no no juicy bits in the orange juice, please. But something about bubble tea... I don't know. I've had it a few times, just with the popping bubbles. It's not bad. I don't know. I just... It's the the thought of sucking up the the, the tapioca balls. That part is kind of weird. It seems like something you should be eating with a spoon. It goes pop, pop, pop in your Mm -hmm. mouth, though kind of fun. I'll just get a bag of Pop Rocks. It's not the same. No, Pop Rocks are fireworks in your mouth. Anyways, <laughs> we'll talk more about bubble tea in the second half. And I'm sure I'll have more rants. That or I'll have just given up and I'll just sit here dejectedly <laughs> while Janine pokes me with a stick and goes, Jess, are you okay? <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> we are back with part two of Death by Bubble Tea by Jennifer Chow. So, did did part two um, improve your feelings on this book? No, not at all. Made it worse, didn't it? Made it worse. Yeah, I figured. I figured it did. It's it's just a bad book. <laughs> like, it's, there's no mystery. The characters are unlikable. The writing is not great. But like, did, it, it's fine, but it's not, like, anything to write home about. Did you figure out the killer before the end of the book? No, I stopped caring. Okay. But it, it was enough... So there was an element of surprise. Yeah, but it also kind of felt like I'm just going to keep writing until the character reveals itself. And the killer's just like, oh, yeah, okay, that one. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, pick a name out of a hat. Kind of, yeah. Like, it could have literally been any of the roommates. Yeah, that's true. It could have been. And there was nothing like... There was nothing about Sienna? Sierra? Yeah, I think Sierra. Sierra. That made her more of a... And, um, my brain's stuck on target. Um, Likelihood. Yeah. Than anyone else, really. Yeah. It's, no, I agree. It kind of felt like she went, well, one of the roommates is the killer, and then went eeny, miny, mo at the end. Yep. Which one? Because she had, like, fractured relationships with all of them, right? So mm-hmm. it could have been anyone. And, uh, frankly, this whole thing just makes me mad. Because Sierra killed her essentially accidentally... Yeah. She just wanted to make the Vic sick with the dry ice. Mm hmm. Had this whole elaborate plan and colored contacts and whatnot to get to that point. She stole from a dentist, dentist office, hygiene, dental hygienist or something like that. No. Um, vet? Not vet. Wasn't it plastic surgery? Oh, maybe. Dermatologist. Yeah, something like that. 
stole from a dermatologist's office what is technically medical supplies to get her roommate a little bit sick so that she agreed on the vote or whatever. Yeah. Bad Ham would do the same thing for a heck of a lot cheaper <laughs> without the possible charges from stealing from a dermatologist what is technically medical supplies. Right. Seriously, get some ham, leave it out in the sun. There you go. <laughs> Just feed her some undercooked chicken for crying out loud. Yeah. Like, that's... Rather than giving her something that could potentially kill her, like, what kind of moron give somebody dry ice? Yeah. Like, I know. I and, was like... her entire, like, excellent... Oh, I didn't think she'd drink it all. Like, I uh, didn't know she was that tolerant to cold. Really? Oh, I know everybody's told cold tolerances, don't you? Like, the whole mm. thing is just dumb. Yeah. It's just... There's better books out there. Go read those instead. The the one thing I will say, though, is, like, the dry ice was clever for the autopsy part of it. For the autopsy part of it, yes. But it's very much along the lines of, put it this way, in Sherlock, the TV show, one of the characters uh, is murdered, obviously, and one of the people suggests that they were stabbed with a meat knife. And this goes right along those same brain waves, like, the smartness. Which I know is the most eloquent way I could have put that. <laughs> like, it's very much the same kind of mm -hmm. nonsense. Complete nonsense. Like, there's there's better ways. If she had died of salmonella poisoning, you literally would probably not have been caught. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, oh, what a horrid accident. Terrible. We're yes. so sorry for your loss. As opposed to, why do you put dry ice in her drink? Mm -hmm. You clearly tried to do something to her. Mm -hmm. Again, go with the old ham. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sorry, but this, this is so dumb. It's, they wrote an entire book about how to make what what would have been a very simple thing to do. Yeah, way more complicated. Yeah, that is true, and not in an interesting manner. <laughs> Listen, I can readily admit <laughs> that cozy mysteries are generally crappy writing. Do I still enjoy them? Yes. Did I enjoy this one? Not at all. I did like in the end that Yale and Celine like started developing a relationship with each other and became friends and yeah, you know like part of it the was family like part fine. of it, which is you know. Uh, otherwise, the book was dull as heck. Yep. Like it wasn't even like like there's some where it's like very obvious you know who did it. Mm -hmm. It it's more about you know getting there and the hijinks along the way and you know somebody drops a shoe on a crocodile and you're stuck up a tree for three days, whatever. <laughs> No direct example, just out of my head. <laughs> well, already then. <laughs> I should write cozy mysteries. No, you shouldn't. If I were to write a cozy mystery series, I've got the perfect twist for it. You write the cozy mysteries, and all along somebody else gets convicted for these murders, yada, yada, yada. And at the end, no, it turns out it's actually the main character that's a serial killer. And surprise! I read that in a book recently, that the character was a cozy mystery writer, and she talked about doing that with her... I don't think I'm the first person to have no. had that idea, but I don't know that anybody's ever actually done it. If anybody has, tell me, because I would totally read the heck out of that series. <laughs> what if it was terribly written? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. We read Amish Zombies in Space. <laughs> and you want to I mean, read more from that series. Yeah, because it's Amish blank in space. I think Amish Werewolves in Space is the next one. Or Amish, va Amish Vampires. Either or. Either or. It doesn't really matter. Not not important. No. But I would read them, even if they're written terribly, because there's some books that are so bad they're good. <laughs> and I do like terribly written things where it's just, like, absolutely ludicrous from start to finish. Mm -hmm. This isn't. It's boring. This is not it's like, so bad that it was good. It was just bad. The main character is spoiled. She's not likable. Mm -hmm. The mystery is blah. And not mysterious at all. And I could think of 15 different ways to accomplish the same thing, but better. Mm -hmm. Not an admission of guilt. Um, and <laughs> the the little bit that was good, which was her and her cousin kind of forming a tentative relationship, is, you know, fine. Yeah. Like, it was going to go either or. Yeah. Also, she and Nick did not fall in love, which is what I predicted. Which is a relief, because neither of them are good people. Well, it's just the one thing that you expect to happen it didn't happen like there was no romance in this one usually there's at least a, like a little element of romance there's some kind of like oh are they aren't they are they aren't they and yeah and it's usually like or often it's the main character and like one of the police officers or like somebody involved somehow not always but 
somehow tied to it, <laughs> somehow tied to it enough that you can kind of it's plausible to have them repeatedly showing up. Yeah. But like Nick is also not a good person. No. Like the whole blog thing. Are you kidding me? I know that was. I'm gonna force you to uh, solve this mystery by random deadline. Yeah, and why was it up to her to solve it? Yeah. Why aren't you talking to the cops? Exactly. Why are you harassing this random a former employee of a bookstore? Yeah. Like, <laughs> as a librarian, that would be, like, somebody coming to me and going, you have to solve this mystery. Yeah. No, literally don't. Yeah, exactly. Like, just because release your blog, who cares? It's just because you're in competition with her dad. Yeah. So what? And then he released it anyway, even though yeah. it's kind of like, you yeah, know, we solved it already. Yeah. No, he was... Or, hey, we've been cleared. Yeah, like, it's in, not us. His blackmail was basically, oh, your dad's restaurant's going to suffer. Yeah. His, like, her, seriously? Her dad's restaurant suffered for, like, a day. Yeah. And... <laughs> like, that's not suffering. That's one of those things where, restaurant-wise, you get the restaurant people to come down, inspect it, make sure there's no health violations, come back, and go, okay, cool, we're good. Yeah. People will come back. Yep. And they did come back in the book. Yeah. So, yeah, and I... The whole thing is just... Like, okay, so one of the big things was... What's her cousin's name? Celine. Celine. Leaving Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. And why she left Hong Kong. Oh, my goodness. Nobody leaves the country because of somebody else's wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> Just because you accidentally pulled on her strap and her shirt came down? Like, I'm well aware of the fact that Asian culture is <clears throat> oftentimes a lot more conservative. However. Yeah, no. Stay off social media for three days. It'll pass. Exactly. Some well, other celebrity will have done something horrible in the meantime. Don't worry about it. It's Hong Kong. you got bigger issues. The scandal was not scandalous. No. At all. I was very disappointed in that. I was like, that's it? It's not even a scan. Never mind a dull. It's, it's, it's dull, not scan. It's, like, it's just... It's just <sighs> yeah. Blah. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I liked about this book was the idea of a night market. Yeah, the night market is great. Let somebody me, should definitely do that here. Yeah. Let's... Yeah, somebody... Put that together. Yeah. But I, I would... 10 out of 10 go to a night market. Sounds like a blast. Yeah. I will not organize it, but I will go to it. I will also not organize it. I do a very good job of it, but I will not do it. <laughs> I'm very confident. <laughs> no. Like, the whole thing is just uh, just dumb and dull. And cringy. It's D&D, not fun, no dragons. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, yes. Okay, the community meeting thing that the cops had. Uh, what, what was, was even the point of that? There was no point. Like, there was no point. Oh, we, we you know, yeah. we're just... We're doing what we can, and then it turned... Like, the cops had a meeting where it's basically, we're doing what we can. If you remember anything, let us know. And then, oh, by the way, here's the use of our room to continue planning your night market. That's literally not how anything works. And the night market was, like, postponed until we can figure it out. After the murder, they had more days when it was open. Yeah. And it was, like, five, four or five days before they actually shut down the night market. <laughs> to like, oh, yeah, no, we're not having it left. <laughs> right? It makes no sense. I know. That's like, oh, yeah, someone was brutally murdered in this restaurant. Step around. We're going to be open for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, right. Once they got everything cleaned up and whatnot, the, then we'll close. Then we're going to close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was so it dumb. Was, this, this whole book was just, like, hard pass. Hard pass. A hard pass. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. I mean, like... And plus, who shuts down a public market because of nothing the market did? Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, people crushed by flying booths and, Well, because you know. uh, they thought she was poisoned at first, I guess. Yes, but that's not... So like, maybe one of the vendors is poisoned. But then more but they, people would have died, right? shut down, like, food vendors or yeah, something. Yeah, right. And there's no indication of anything in the system and the primary investigation that indicates even food vendors should have been shut down. Never yeah. mind all of the craft stalls, the fire breathers, and yeah. the pool of dancers. The entertainers. You don't shut yeah. down an entire market because one person died of something not related to it. Yeah, right? And it's not like if it was a vendor that was actively poisoning customers, there would have been more dead people. Yeah, there was, what, five vendors, I think, that she went to? Yeah, I think so. If those are the ones that you're suspicious of, those guys get suspended until... Yeah, until they're cleared. Until they're cleared. Yeah. You don't shut the entire thing down. No. Like, so silly. It's just so dumb. It's so, so silly. Now, I will say, if you have a book reading goal for the year and you're trying to, like, bulk up your numbers, <laughs> this book did not take long to read at all. Like, three hours max. Yeah. 
probably. Very so if you're looking for something quick to bulk up your reading numbers for the year, you might want to check this one out. That being said, there's better books out there. Go read those instead. Yeah. They're also quick. Gordon Corman, for example. Very yeah. short amount of time to read, but excellent. True, true, true. Read those instead. And there are other better cozy mysteries than this also. Yes. I mean, even the tea one was better than this. <laughs> That's the one, the series that I would recommend is The Tea Shop Mysteries by Laura Childs. Um, if you don't like tea mavens, don't read it. Yeah, that is true. But, uh... Again, the whole, like, ball lights thing that they had in that one sounded like fun. Mm-hmm. Kind of turned out to be nothing. But the idea of it was great. Mm-hmm. I think we're getting more, like, ideas for entertainment options we yeah. should have around here than we're getting, like, anything else in the book. Right? Yeah. But, uh... That, to me, those ones are better than this one by far. Yes. And I'm sure there are others. Do not read the Hannah Swenson uh, cookie mysteries. I can't remember what they're called. They're, I've read every single one. Each one is worse than the one before it. <laughs> I cannot stop reading them. <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> I, I have to. Well, there's recipes, and the recipes always sound so good. I'm mm. like, oh, I could make that. that. looks really good. Oh, that sounds like a good cookie. Why don't I cook this? Okay, the um, cookie ones, I would actually, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'd probably just flip to the back of the book to pick out the recipes. Well, the recipes are at the end of the chapters in this one, so you have to kind of go through, whatever. It's not, you could still find them. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to read the book, but I just, I have to read them when a new one comes out. I don't know why. It's a, like a compulsion to read it, and I, they're terrible. I hate them. <laughs> I hate them a lot. Uh, I mean, it is making me want cookies. Yeah. Like, I kind of want cookies I now. Know. Cookies and coffee. They're drinking coffee all the time, and I read these books, and I want to eat cookies and drink coffee and, uh, and yeah, get together with all my friends and have a meeting. Cause I just want a really, really good chocolate chip cookie. And so, uh, but... You should have a meeting about cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, maybe tomorrow I'll bring cookies. There you go. <laughs> um, but the books, they're terrible. Like, they're, the writing's not even consistent. Like, in one scene, she was on the elevator, and then she was walking towards the elevator... And I'm like, how did she get off the elevator? Last book, different timelines. It's a multiverse. That would be brilliant. We have to stop now. (laughs) You don't have time for writing a book. What I need to do is I need to get into editing the cozy mystery genre, (laughs) and then I'll just make it better. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Because this, for example, could just be a terrible, terrible dream. Hallucination brought on by... It's a... bad ham that the victim was actually fed <laughs> what is with the ham it's easy <laughs> well undercooked chicken is more likely than bad ham because yeah. ham you would taste if it was off undercooked chicken you don't always necessarily notice that true because my second option was like a egg salad which just takes more effort to make and who wants to eat it really <laughs> I take it you're not a fan. Oh, I am not a fan. The thought of it literally makes me gag. I'm just hungry. We're filming this late at lunchtime. Do you think we've ripped this book to shreds enough? No, Do I you have, have one more? more point. Okay, let's hear it. They really need to lay off Blake. Balake. Balake, <laughs> Sorry. <yes. laughs> if you've seen Key and Peele's Substitute Teacher, you will understand that joke. If you haven't, go watch it right now. Like, they kept going, oh, but he has enough motive because he got... Facebook dumped by yeah, right. Her, literally, no, no. Just the guy was dating like three other women. Just because he's a womanizer doesn't mean he's a murderer. Is he even a womanizer? Well, by all indications, he went on a bunch of dates with a bunch of people, and at no point told any of them that he yeah. was dating monogamous. Yeah, that's true. But the he was reality also of dating this day and age is until it's explicitly said that. Yeah, you don't assume. It's you and me and me and you forever. Like, (laughs) you don't assume. And he frankly sounded relieved when she dumped him. Stop trying to go, oh, it was definitely him. It was definitely him. That's a you issue, not him issue. (laughs) Stop trying to portray this guy as some, like, he's a big, bad womanizer. He's not. They kept circling back to him, and I'm like... He's a, what, 24, 25-year-old guy doing what a 25, 24-year-old guy do. Yeah. Like, he's not a villain because of that. Oh, but she... It's like handing out the free tortilla or papusa card thing. She dumped him. It's just business! She dumped him, so he must be in his feels about that. Honestly, it sounds like he's better off. He dodged a (laughs) bullet there. Or some dry ice. (laughs) Like, oh boy! It's just so. There's no character development. No. There's 
and and there's a, supposed to be a second one. I'm like, mm-hmm. how? I know there is. Oh, a this book is painful. Tiny part of me that wants to read it just to see what happens. I do not. Well, I mean, I I don't really, but I think there's. I think I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the fact that this book was so terrible, if I can find it for like ninety nine cents on Kobo or something, I'll probably read it. Uh, I can find it for free, and I still wouldn't do it. <laughs> I don't know, just to see. Like, is maybe the second. Maybe I was gonna say maybe this is her first book, but it's not her first book either. That's the yeah, other which thing. Which is also like this is about the quality that I would expect of your first cozy mystery. Yeah, your first book, your first foray into foray into writing. Even then, this is bad. Like this is like hand it back and like where's the editor? Yeah, saying like this. This and makes this. no sense. And yeah. stop it because literally any one of the roommates could have killed them. Yeah, and who poisoned somebody just to get them to try and change a vote? Like that—that that was the whole thing. A psychopath. Oh, they were going to vote me out because I didn't pay my rent. Yeah. Yeah, d- honey, you got to pay your rent. Welcome to being an adult. It's yeah. It's and not always fun, but you know what's it's a necessary. Great way to make sure you don't get voted out. Pay your rent. Pay your rent, <laughs> and don't poison anyone. Yeah. Maybe buy them a coffee, or help them out with something they need help with, or be really nice. Not let's go straight to putting dry ice in people's drinks. Right. And why are you picking her? Like, because they all didn't like her. She sounded why bossy. didn't you do the same thing to the other two? They also needed to vote you in. Instead of vote you out. She, I think this girl was the instigator. She Still. sounded kind of bossy. Oh, she sounded like not a fun person and sort of a <laughs> human being completely and totally. <laughs> but it's still yeah. very... Like, you like, can just move out. For murder, that is the weakest excuse ever. Well, yeah. In Cozy Mysteries, they're not always like... No, but like, try. Yeah. Like... True, true, true. A little bit of effort. You can, I can guarantee you can squeeze a bit more plot into this. Yeah. A little less of the, let's go to random people's houses, snoop through their stuff, and get nothing for it. Like. Yes. It's. Oh. No, I I don't disagree. This one was a bit of a disappointment. Yes. Yes. I wish memory wiping was a thing so I didn't have to remember <laughs> this book. Well, you could just not think about it. After we hit stop on this record, you don't have to think about it ever again. Oh, I'm looking forward to the future. Before it was flying cars, now it's this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do you got any fun facts? I do have some fun facts. Uh, today, we are going to talk about a little bit of the history of bubble tea, because it is kind of interesting, as well as... Um, if there have ever been any deaths caused by bubble tea, actually. So stay tuned for that. Bubble tea, also known as pearl milk tea, bubble milk tea, tapioca milk tea, boba tea, or boba, is a tea-based drink that originated in Taiwan in the early 1980s. Taiwanese immigrants brought it to the United States in the 1990s, initially in California through regions across Los Angeles County. But the drink has also spread to other countries where there is a large East East Asian diaspora population. Bubble tea most commonly consists of tea accompanied by chewy tapioca balls, boba or pearls, but it can be made with other toppings as well, such as grass jelly, aloe vera, red bean, and popping boba, which is the one that I like. It has many varieties and flavors, but the two most popular varieties are pearl black milk tea and pearl green milk tea. Pearl for the tapioca balls at the bottom. That seems kind of obvious. <laughs> Bubble teas fall under two categories, teas without milk and milk teas. Both varieties come with a choice of black, green, or oolong teas as the base. The oldest known bubble tea drink consisted of a mixture of hot Taiwanese black tea, tapioca pearls, condensed milk, and syrup or honey. Nowadays, bubble tea is most commonly served cold. And to me, that sounded like it might be good. I don't know why, but the hot boba. I'm a yeah. hard no on absolutely everything. <laughs> I do not like tea. I do not like tapioca. The milk tea tapioca combination, uh, t- no, it's not working for me. <laughs> Yeah, your face says it all. Yeah, it's not my drink at all. Just wait till the next paragraph because it will really turn you on. 
Some shops offer, offer milk or cheese foam on top of the drink, giving the drink a consistency similar to that of whipped cream and a saltier flavor profile. Are you okay over there? <laughs> cheese foam. I know, right? Ugh. I know. I love I, cheese. It's my favorite food. I don't like cheese. Like it's it's but, it's an ingredient I will never head for the cheese platter. But, no, the, but the fruit platter all the way. But cheese foam. Cheese foam. I don't want yeah. to know, but at the same time I kind of morbidly do. It's Okay, one shop described the effect of the cheese foam as neutralizing the bitterness of the tea. And as you drink it, you taste the returning sweetness of the tea. Or how about you just drink sweet tea? There's a, there's a strange thought with no things in it. And foam to me does not seem like a whipped cream consistency, so I'm not really sure. Well, I won't, like, what kind of cheese? Maybe it's cream cheese. Because, like, a cream cheese thing I could understand a bit more because cream cheese tea yeah. kind of... Works but it says more? saltier flavor profile. Cream cheese is not really salty. It, it, well, I wouldn't describe it as salty, more of a like lemony kind of tang to it. So yeah, I don't know. It's very curious to me. Like, it's just like brie whipped up. Brie. Brie's gross. <laughs> Cheddar. <laughs> this is orange Cheddar. That's what I was envisioning in my head. <laughs> like, orange, foamy. And in my brain, it stretches. Oh. Stretchy, foamy, mm, with no, things. I, I won't be trying that. Thank you. Ugh. Moving on. According to a recent study, the bubble tea industry is expected to grow by almost two billion, to a whopping four point three billion by twenty twenty seven. This is from a twenty twenty CN article. Why? That's huge. Like that's a huge industry. Why? Well, some people like it, Jess. Just because you don't doesn't mean others don't. I just don't. It's, it's, I don't get it. Now, moving on to the really interesting stuff. A constipated teen was taken to the hospital complaining of severe stomach pain and told docs she hadn't been able to have a bowel movement for five days. Dr. Zhang Lue ordered scans of the girl's stomach, which revealed vast quantities of undigested tapioca balls bunging up her entire <laughs> digestive system. <laughs> Sorry, the word bugging. I know. It just reminds me of bears. <laughs> the medic estimated there to be hundreds of the starchy spheres, which are the key ingredient in the teenager's favorite beverage. The girl, who only admitted to having one cup of bubble tea recently, was prescribed with laxatives to help flush them out. <laughs> she must be hiding the true number of pearl milk tea she had. So many undigested tapioca balls can't all be from just one cup. She must have had quite a few over a short period. The chief of the hospital's emergency department said, Bubble tea pearls are made using tapioca, which is already not easy to digest. Some companies add thickeners, such as gelatin, to make the balls more al dente. Drinking too much bubble tea can easily lead to gastrointestinal dysfunction. Another reason not to eat it. Yeah. So, okay, this teen did not die, per se. Mm -hmm. However, word to the wise, don't drink a lot of it over a short amount of time. Yeah. A 19-year-old girl and her brother recently bought a cup of bubble tea in China and were heading towards their friend's house when she suddenly had difficulty breathing and her hands started to turn black. What? Unfortunately, she died after they arrived at the hospital despite doctors' efforts to bring her back using CPR, and it was later revealed that she had trouble sucking up her boba pearls, but sucked too hard and got three tapioca pearls stuck in her trachea, causing her to suffocate and die. The report advises the elderly and children to drink their boba tea directly from the cup to decrease the can chances of getting choked, and that one tapioca pearl is big enough to block the entire airway. Hands started turning black? That's what it says. That seems a tad exaggeration, probably more of a bluish tinge. Perhaps. Lack of oxygen. Uh, so another cautionary tale. Um, in case you need more excuses not to drink a drink with things in it, with yeah. stretchy milk foam on top. So it, bubble tea has actually killed some, at least one person. I think there was more. Uh, that's where I chose to stop with my research because... It makes sense. You've got choking hazards in a drink. Yeah. I mean, it does. It does make sense. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't suck on your straw too hard. And don't kill people with dry ice. There's better ways. <laughs> There's really <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing else I can say. My advice for murder. <laughs> So that's what we thought of the book, but those are just our opinions, and we'd like to hear yours. Leave us a comment. Thanks for joining us for Books and Banter, and thanks to our editor, Linda. We'll see you next time.